Fossi is at it again, releasing the V3 Mono, promising 240 watts into 4 ohms using a 48 volt 5 amp power supply. Be careful, the cheaper offering is a 32 volt power supply, dropping rated power significantly to only 100 watts. Before we look over this unit, be aware that I have not fully tested it because the very cool option where one 10 amp power supply can be used to power two V3 monos had a noise issue when I received my review samples. No, this isn't a paid review, but you should be aware my dad outlaid no cash for these. So why the hell are you watching a review in which I didn't listen to 600 hours of Diane Bish? Stay tuned. So Fossey is sending me a new splitter. In the meantime, there were some tests I did conduct. But first I want to bore you with a quick walk around of the unit. The front is very spartan, choosing between XLR and RCA input, which means you can hook up two devices to this if you want to, plus a power switch. I was quite excited after reading the review of this unit on Audio Science Review that there was a trigger. So I spent a good half an hour looking the unit over, prodding it until I noticed the auto function isn't controlled by an external preamp trigger but a sensing trigger built into the unit sensing audio signals. So I tested the auto on off functionality and it does turn off after 10 minutes and turns on after about a second once receiving a signal. Well done, Fossey. Notice what is not on the front of this unit, a volume control. You better have a preamp properly hooked up to this. Do not use the Yamaha WXC50 auxiliary output into this unit for those of you not familiar with this issue, check out the Weem Pro Plus review to see the stupidity of my mom doing just that. Parents aren't like they used to be when I was growing up. Most products don't focus on the size of a unit, but because the V3 Mono, like its predecessors, is a fanless design, heat dissipation is important. So you see many of these holes. Fossey says this design has dustproof filter screens. See here. Unfortunately, that will take a year of use until I can pull apart the unit and see how well the dust control works, or I could just let Humboldt snuggle up to it for a couple of days. Unlike nearly all other audio products, the excitement of a monoblock amplifier is on the rear of the unit, where we see the influence of yours truly on product design. Yes, that is a gain switch on the RCA inputs. You're welcome. I am super excited to see how this does in my highly controversial, some would even go so far as say useless and misleading testing of amplifier power. But I'm digging in my heels and sticking with these tests, and I'm confident Eric Alexander would be very proud of me. Of course, next to the RCA is the XLR input, speaker outputs, and power in. Now I'm going to go way out on a limb here, and without doing any testing whatsoever, I'm going to tell you channel separation is stunning, simply superb. So you're thinking, what did this guy test? Well, I tested heat. I couldn't listen because of the noise issue. So I hooked up one unit to an 8 ohm resistor and the other to a 4 ohm resistor. Streamed white noise for 4 hours via the RCA input with the switch set to 31 dB gain and checked out how hot the unit got. How hot is the Fosse V3 mono after being left on? Stay tuned for the next episode. Nah, won't make you wait. The unit hooked up to an 8 ohm load had a surface temperature of 107 degrees after one hour at three quarters power. The unit hooked up to a 4 ohm load had a surface temperature of 116 degrees after an hour. After two hours, no change. Let's take a look at three hours. And now let's take a look at hour four. While I was impressed, the heat levels didn't continue to rise excessively after the first hour into a four ohm load or eight ohm load. It definitely wasn't cool to the touch or just warm. So according to Fossey, we have an extremely powerful, stable class D amp that is not load dependent. Sorry, Wharfdale Linton users, this amp isn't for you. Once I get the new power supply splitter and listen to Bish, I will report back if this amp is worth approximately $275 for two 
including the 10 amp power supplier and splitter. Let's put this into perspective. If the Fosse V3 mono can hit even close to a specified wattage number, is nearly flat from 20 to 20,000 and isn't load dependent and can drive loads as low as four ohms, then they are successfully undercutting products like the Emotiva Base X A2, which to be fair, does add true triggers as well as an auto trigger on function. But there are undercutting the price by 50%. There's no remote, but that's hardly necessary with the auto sensing capability. In the meantime, links are in the description and I don't make one red cent on anything you click on. Thanks for watching and remember to have a great day. Like, subscribe, and comment if you want. Take care.